Hello. I see Krasi, you joined. Hi. Hello. Hello. And we probably have one attendee also joining. So we'll be waiting for more people for the next five minutes. If you don't mind, I'll probably oh, stop, stop recording and uh, turn it on uh, at the time when we start the webinar. Mm -hmm. And right now we'll probably just wait for more people. I just decided to be a few minutes early. <laughs> okay. Uh, where are you based, Natalie? Um, okay. So we are very excited tonight to have this wonderful workshop by Mirrorverse Creators um, Hybrid Worker, The Turn of the Tide with AI. And um, tonight we have amazing facilitators uh, from Outcome Agency. So we have Strategic Director Krasi uh, Bajankova uh, and uh, Design Lead Diana. So together with Kevin Richard uh, from the Design and Critical Thinking Community and Customer Experience uh, Manager from Swiss health uh, insurance industry. So together they will share uh, their experience um, and collaboration outcome on uh, the multi-ocean strategy design. Um, I can rest you assured that it's such a nice, interesting and interactive way to approach um, any strategy. I, I really like this and hope you will enjoy it as well. Um, so we'll pass the mic to our amazing speakers. Thanks, Natalie, uh, for the nice introduction. My name is Krasi. So um, good afternoon, good morning, good day to everyone who joined us today uh, for this um, really interesting topic, the hybrid worker and the turn of the tie with AI. So briefly, what are we going to do um, today in this one hour? We have a packed agenda, but uh, we are... We promise to keep you all engaged at all times, so um, time is going to pass very quickly. And we are here today because we have a really cool and uh, interesting tool that we want to sh uh, share with the uh, bigger community, multi-ocean strategy framework. Uh, we are going to, after we explain what the framework is all about, the rest of the session is pretty much getting your uh, hands uh, into the tool and playing with the concepts. Uh, and uh, at the end, we would have a few minutes to sum uh, summarize um, our, our journey so far, um, talk to you about what is next, and uh, share some resources um, around the tool and etc. And without further ado, I'm going to begin. Uh, why are we here today? We are witnessing a new change. Again, the keyword here is hybrid, but we are all facing a really different reality from the one that we experienced during um, the time of COVID, because this time the reality again changed uh, for us uh, as hybrid workers, but uh, we introduced a new dimension, new dimension around the experience which stretched in the virtual domain. And this new dimension actually brought us together much closer to unlock and um, uh, expand our capabilities when it comes to knowledge. And uh, this new kind of hybrid this time around is not about the location, but it's about how we work and how we can collaborate and create together with creative AI. Oh, sorry. I keep pressing the wrong thing. And the opportunity to work with AI is really exciting because uh, on one side, uh, it removed a lot of barriers that we face in the past, but on the other side, it put us on a really interesting learning new path because we all have to think about and start adopting um, these new AI tools that are out there and keep coming every week. Something new, a new application is, um, is announced and it's very exciting for all of us to get our hands on it. But at the same time, we also need to learn how to integrate these different perspectives because it is one thing to collaborate with your fellow human colleague. It's another thing when the collaboration happens with a machine. And we have to learn how to share context with AI 
What does it mean to now act accountably and responsibly? responsibly? So in simple words, the opportunity with the eye is great, but at the same time, it created these unprecedented challenges and risks that we as hybrid workers, we have to carefully think about what we can do. And there is some good news in all that, because in the past, we got accustomed to this idea of wearing multiple hats because we always needed a help to make better decision, decisions, especially in the time of uh, change and rapid disruption. But if we are to be honest with ourselves, despite this attempt to wear multiple hats, we never could really overcome our personal biases. And uh, if I'm also honest, not all hands really felt comfortable for me as a, as a, as a thinker or as a strategy uh, professional. But now when AI happen um, and uh, AI revolution begin, all of a sudden we have this new opportunity ahead of us that with AI, we think that what is happening is that um, this allows us to overcome these biases and puts us in a really different trajectory because with AI, we can wear all the hats at the same time. And the benefits are tremendous as long as we learn how we can work differently. We can look broader, we can think harder, we can certainly move faster, iterate much, much sooner, and hopefully the outcome would be that we will decide better. So often challenges come with many unknowns and they remain unsolvable to a certain extent. But I don't think we are that powerless with certain challenges that affect us so deeply. So our ability to shape the future and understand our role can in it, it can be gained with the right methods and tools to address the evolving context of hybrid workers. Uh, the framework aims to empower uh, them to navigate more successfully the unknown. So to explain a little bit the creation of the multi-ocean strategy, uh, by the way, we could use a much better name to, 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 to name the, our tool, but our goal was to build a framework that can add more flexibility to scope in a strategy and begin to consider relationships that are hindered by silos despite the demand to see things more connected. So with this in mind, we sought to bring a space where creative problem solving could kick in. The environment would grow through visual metaphors that can cover blind spots and gaps in strategy planning and have teams feel empowered by their exploration to prioritize the best course of action, now sitting on a richer narrative. And to fulfill the task, the tool is crafted to generate unique insights by exploring the different forces at play. Next slide. Yeah. So the elements of the framework are interactive and modular. We can mold them to fit our context, expand their nuances and meaning. In a bit, we'll go over them uh, in more detail uh, and we'll also have an activity to play, but it's useful to already get familiar with the building blocks. So we have five oceans, each with a unique set of conditions. We have six interactive players with specific behaviors and traits and four monsters. Uh, and what makes them uh, key to the framework uh, and you know important to use is that the risk they pose to growth and relationship building. So to sum up briefly uh, how we're seeing the framework benefiting the users, uh, in a couple of lines, it speeds up the alignment of the strategic vision, products, and services with market needs by assessing their impact more holistically. It can help complement processes to make them more to, to help uh, teams make more informed decisions with unique insights despite the change and the uncertainty. And quite powerfully, it can help build effective partnership with collaboration and co-creation at the heart to harness the deep potential of what it means to be in a to, to have a strategic partnership. And so I now Diana forgot something, which is which was at the beginning of, of it. Oh, we actually wanted to have fun. So we didn't want to have a, yet another boring strategic session with sad and serious faces. So we thought it's possible to touch on that, okay? <laughs> to be done differently. Yes. So uh, now during this workshop, we're going to connect a little bit the uh, reality of the hybrid worker with the metaphor. We'll get familiar with the oceans, with the players and the monsters. Then we'll generate actions to trigger the strategic response to the disruption. So we actually see a way out or through the challenge. But I think, you know, we can take it bit by bit. And, you know, so you don't feel too overwhelmed and actually have some fun doing this. Um, 
Can and we... it is important to, to keep in mind that um, we are going to run through these five steps. So this is how the rest of the session for the remaining uh, 50 minutes is going to be organized. The challenge at hand is to understand our new reality as hybrid workers. I feel like everyone can relate to that. We are going to pick a notion which we uh, collectively would agree is mostly impacted by AI. We are really curious to find out what is that. Then uh, as players, we need to think about uh, and foresee what transformation lies ahead. As Diana spoke about, there are certainly uh, risks out there and we need your help to figure out what is the biggest. And lastly, we should not leave this session without having a response and uh, at least an idea of what we need to consider in order to move ahead. So if this is clear, then now the, the fun can begin. Yeah, and before we have fun, we will just dive a little bit more into um, the ocean. And um, the oceans are the metaphors we, we choose to um, represent the, the markets uh, in which you are playing uh, with your business model. And uh, as you can see, we have different uh, type of oceans and they all represent uh, some uh, specific conditions um, that are linked to what you are trying to do within your market. Um, and the idea behind the, the framework is to first uh, enable you to, to think in terms of where, where am, am I playing exactly and move to, towards, uh, potentially move towards another ocean. Slide, please. Yes. So uh, now the fun begins, and we ask you to, uh, within five minutes, to uh, map out in which uh, ocean you are. So uh, just to provide uh, an example, the, the way to, to, to think about that is uh, to ask yourself, uh, well, um, um, what I, am I doing um, within my ocean? So if you are in the green ocean, it's probably because um, you are more in um, sustainability, like if you are a company trying to reduce plastic waste and stuff like that, um, that's the that's purpose uh, of a profit and sustainability objectives in long-term vision. Um, and, and so basically you have those uh, criteria that can help you uh, know in which ocean you are. So the question we ask you uh, to answer here is uh, which ocean is your company or industry currently in? and what key areas of your work uh, are distributed by AI. So um, let you start um, putting some post-its uh, where you believe is your ocean and try to write down the, the key areas you are doing there. I'll uh, put a timer so we are on track. Does anyone want music? We can always do music. Uh, music is a good idea. Okay, let's see what this one is. And another hint maybe for me to think about the ocean is if you are, for example, working for a company that has software as a service, as a business model, you may actually uh, discover that uh, you are not in a red ocean, but you are in a yellow ocean. That's a new addition for those that are familiar for the blue ocean strategy framework, which has red and uh, blue. We added here also yellow, which is characterized with a hyperscale, a very high risk, uh, but exponential growth. Or maybe some of you may come actually from a more so niche or local business where the community matters a lot, where um, you have unique type of products or services. And to some extent, the ocean may be hostile to non-locals, so to say. Um, so we, with these five oceans, we have a lot of uh, room and flexibility um, to fit everyone. So let's see what we've got today. And really to think about how uh, does uh, AI really disrupt? Uh, I think we your, have a question uh, your... from Nijdeh. I'm not sure I can pronounce the it's, name correctly. It's Nijdeh. Nijdeh, sorry. <laughs> yes, please. OK, um, I have a question about blitz scale in yellow ocean. What does it mean? Uh, blitz scale means exponential growth, uh, super high and super aggressive. 
in a very short period of time. You typically see this uh, if you're familiar with the business model of Uber, uh, Facebook, any of the software giants. Thank you. Thank you. Google, Amazon, <laughs> the list keeps uh, growing. <clears throat> Yeah, I think we can say you are in this yellow ocean if you are most likely a startup and that you are um, basically trying to find this critical mass of uh, of uh, feature and customer, right? So usually you are kind of in this place, but it's, you are this kind of company. And it's interesting to to expand a little the the imagination and the horizon is that you know you your business doesn't necessarily have to be in one single ocean. Businesses are often complex, so you may have a service or your role may be linked to a specific set uh, target segment that uh, let's say is more uh, linked to the the red ocean. So. When we think about this, it's good actually not to try to understand it, but to imagine, to be able to imagine them with the power of the metaphor. I'm curious about this one with we deal with a lot of communities. Does that mean it's a it's a, on the sustainability side or is it more on to actually involving with uh, the the local businesses? Okay, yeah. We have a, a nice mix. I was hoping there'll be more people from uh, the blue ocean, but um, <clears throat> maybe it's a matter of, uh, of time until the ocean turns uh, into blue. And we all, with the help of AI, become actually more innovative. So this would be a nice... Uh, oh, I see Miro. Sorry, I missed that. How did I not see that? <laughs> I, I was kind of uh, not sure where to put it because at some point, especially with this uh, COVID circumstances, we face hyperscale, but at the same time, we are still in this market where having a visual collaboration tool for teams is an innovation for lots of like traditional I companies. I think it's a it's a blue ocean because you started a completely different segment and you went after this unmet customer need. So Miro does belong here. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> but now in order to move further, we actually want, uh, want you to vote and uh, out of these five oceans, pick the one that we should continue to dive deeper as we make uh, the journey forward uh, <clears throat> as uh, hybrid workers dealing with the tide caused by AI. So if uh, Diana can help me create a poll, it would be interesting to see where would you cast your vote? Which ocean do you think that it's going to be most susceptible for disruption or perhaps better suited um, to figure out what is going on and how we can um, navigate these turbulent waters? So I'm going to do two things. Be? You're a lot, you, you uh, I'm going to cast actually two votes per person, one for the ocean and one for the service, for the sticky note that they find interesting that they would like to dive deeper into. How's that sound? Perfect. Let's go. Yeah, we have a minute. <laughs> In the name of democracy. Uh, 
<laughs> it's uh, the name of the game is democracy and punctuality because we have a busy agenda. <laughs> Yes, but I think it's it's interesting because there are, you know, like almost even overlapping businesses and sometimes it's so subtle the uh, the impact of a disruption like AI and how it's going to affect us. We have all the time these different scenarios that, oh, it's dooming or it's not, a, you know, it's not going to take our job, it's not going to do this, it's not going to do that, but actually taking a more um, co-creative attitude, I think. It's uh, it could help shed a bit of light on how to do it. So, okay, so we have a tie between red and blue ocean. Uh, people are actually curious about those. And then, let's see what we have. Oh, and Miro. So, do we want to find out more about Miro? And I think the... we should. Let's uh, let's pick the blue ocean and uh, <laughs> see what's going on. <laughs> nice. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. So the next uh, the next component in the framework are the players and you may be wondering what exactly is a player but the easiest to explain this is to think about a dynamic persona that in this context represents the brand and this dynamic persona has different um, behaviors and takes different actions it also forms different kind of relationship and this is necessary because um, thinking about and working from this point of view can help you evolve and think uh, a bit differently um, to form your partnership and figure out uh, what are the roles and the capabilities that you need uh, to move um, uh, and develop forward. And in the framework, we are using six of these uh, personas. And don't worry if you um, forget the names, uh, we will be keep coming back to it over and over again, but just to point out a few of them. So we have the Maverick, which is all around the disruption and they're symbolized in this image with the uh, idea with the hand. The seeker is after an opportunity. We have a protector, which typically uh, a, a, a character associated with control. We also have a very important uh, uh, component around the connector, which builds a network. And lastly, we have the buyer, um, an archetype that um, is uh, 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 is connected to the flow, flow of goods, flow of information, flow of exchange. And lastly is the makers, makers who are in the process of uh, creation, creation of a service, creation of a solution, creation of a, a physical product. And why does this matter? Because it matters because when we think about AI, um, there are different uh, components that play a role that uh, create an opportunity for us if we can associate with one of these role to think about what what steps and how can AI actually augment our current capability and work. And um, in this next activity, we like to invite you to consider and pick your favorite, one of these six characters, and then think about what in the context of AI um, can help the, the player perform better. And what else you can add to this uh, if all of a sudden AI is at your disposal? For example, I feel quite strongly uh, connected to the seeker myself. And I, since the seeker is all about growth opportunities, I'm now very excited because with AI, I can build so many new hypotheses around products and solutions and help clients prioritize which are the right ones. But now we are wondering uh, who's your favorite and then how would you use AI um, to the best of your ability being such a player? So for this activity, we're also going to give five minutes to think about uh, what is possible and then share your ideas next to the corner of the player that you most associate with. And there are no right or wrong answers here. Um, you can be a maverick, you may think that buyer is a cool one so whatever works for you we were just curious to see what would uh how would you use ai creatively to augment your skills
Another thing that comes to mind when I think about me as a seeker is actually I was uh, quite pleasantly surprised to learn that um, uh, testing with users with the power of AI actually can happen in the synthetic way. And the outcome of such uh, exploration is pretty much as accurate as uh, testing with uh, real people and uh, real customers. So for me, having this synthetic persona was an eye opening uh, that I can now consider and completely change um, what I can do and how I can do my job better. But I'm just wondering, what does it mean to you? I see quite a few sticky notes around the seeker, but also in the other places around the maker. And of course the maverick through rapid iterations. <clears throat> And it's also helpful to think about this uh, kind of sense of identity, for example, as a maker, you know, in order to strengthen that, uh, those abilities, uh, I thought that uh, the addition of AI is really uh, powerful when it comes to helping a maker move a bit faster and testing ideas and shifting their perspective because, you know, how you'd think of a typical maker, you, you have a, a sturdy build that it's a bit slower, it's more action oriented, but not so easy to switch uh, gears. So I thought that this actually AI can work very well as a complementary thing for the, the capability that you don't normally uh, display in your work. I see a pattern with data. People do uh, appreciate the intervention of AI in cleaning up the data or just might as well just delegate all the tasks that are so uh, overloading uh, our cognitive uh, and attention span. Oh, and also uh, on the, the other side is people who actually want to use them in their uh, typical meetings and uh, collaborative sessions. I think we can agree that, you know, often we feel stuck in, uh, you know, where do we move next? What do we do? Uh, and we could use a sparring partner to just declutter our mental space um, and I think uh, this somehow characterizes the hybrid worker you have someone kind of living in between in a, a liminal state uh, and has to to juggle all of this complexity so being able to delegate it like this I think it's uh it's really interesting I also feel like uh, this this allows us to uh, actually act with confidence because when we have to make these complex decisions in a, such a, a highly volatile space, moving with confidence plays a big role because this is the only way you can align your team around your vision, being on a product level or strategic level. So you need all the help you can get. And from that perspective, AI is the big ally uh, in this context to to help us shed some light in the spaces where we are prone to our biases or simply don't have uh, the ability to connect the dots so quickly. And back again to this idea, wearing these multiple hats at the same time, which I found as a really cool metaphor to explain what is going on in the minds of the hybrid worker. Well, thank you so much for this input. So now we are going to ask you again to vote and um, Tell us which which of these players you you think we should carry further in in, in the journey of the hybrid worker. So we need your vote. Uh, and Can we take another one of these uh, the the applications too, or just to focus on the players? Uh, let's focus on the players. Okay. So start now. I think everyone's going to just uh, <laughs> pick a favorite and no one's going to choose. Oh, actually, I cannot because my... Uh, ah. <laughs> there you go.
Okay, a few more seconds. Wow. I'm curious now. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we've always had this anxiety, which one people will like the least. Does anyone want to be a protector and, like, preserve the status quo? Oh, again, a tie between a seeker and a maverick. I'll let you do the call. Which one should we take? Uh, I pick a maverick. Okay. And now we move to the next component, which are the monsters, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, as you as you saw so far, we we defined uh, in which area we play, in which version we play. We defined as well what kind of uh, player we are. Um, and as you saw, we can be uh, in multiple versions at the same time, and we can be different players, like different facets of uh, players um, and with all this um, opportunity landscape we can perceive uh, comes with opportunity come some uh, risks or uh, threats to what we are trying to do and a nice way to represent that um, as a metaphor was the, the monsters so the monsters they are the manifestation of um, inherent not necessarily inherent but risk are threats into what we are trying to achieve. Um, and um, as with the, the oceans and the player, we have different uh, monsters. And uh, what we want to do is to associate them to uh, some kind of um, emotion. Because uh, here in this, uh, this stage, uh, we are trying to identify what feels to us a threat or uh, a risk. So we have the mermaid, which is linked to this aspect of seduction, uh, the leviathan, which is fear, um, the, the kraken, which is greed, and Moby Dick, which is obsession. And uh, just bear in mind that it, it, it should mean something to you. So we, we don't provide um, a standard definition of what is seduction in your context. We want you to think of what could be an aspect of seduction, the risk associated with uh, seduction within your context or the risk associated with obsession or fear and stuff like that. So if we move to the other board, yes. Um, now we ask you to, uh, so what, do, what are you worried about when it comes to using AI, which is the opportunity space, right? Uh, now we want to understand where, where is the risk. So Re regarding obsession, it could be something related to the fact that we, we are obsessed with this idea of automating the task and removing this human aspect of intervention. Uh, but it could be also on the seduction side, for instance, of um, absolutely wanting to replace search engine with, with AI or um, outsourcing intelligence in some ways. Uh, so now just take five minutes to map out what feels like um, um, a risk for you. And uh, which one you are most worried about when it comes yes. to using AI? Because the interesting thing about these monsters is they, they do cloud our judgment, our ability to uh, understand uh, the, the reason we actually do uh, certain poor decisions. Uh, especially, I mean, I'm a, a bit hung up on fear because uh, often with unknown variables and innovation is we tend to react out of fear and uh, simply avoid it to you know enter a fight or flight response, but we don't see the nuances and the potential anymore. And with this exercise, we also wanted to show you that it is possible of any any context, any uh, any um, environment to find out such monsters. It doesn't need to be a um, difficult task. All you have to do is think creatively and put these ideas around fear, seduction, greed, and obsession uh, in what is meaningful to you and your business.
<laughs> I like uh, this note, O for one and none for all, which is the greed. <laughs> yes, um, that's very real and um, quite, uh, quite an urgent, actually, to think about what do we do. <sighs> Next to it, like business is becoming more robotic. Yeah, I totally see this. And yeah, and there's this, uh, on the fear side, there's this real worry that we're actually going to get lazier and lazier and, you know, just not stop using our, our cognitive capabilities altogether and let AI do everything. Uh, but that's uh, hopefully not. But I think this is uh, the idea of bringing up the emotions and risks together because it's it's almost like a two-way street. You know, it's how we respond, uh, how we feel about it and what kind of happens objectively in the world. And, you know, they're a mix of both. Yeah. And the risk does it have, they don't have to be real, actually, like concrete, just a exactly. perception. They're, they can basically be made up and you are just worried for nothing, but you can't know that until you face reality or you can look back and say, oh, it was fine. People seem to like the the monsters. I feel like uh, it's <laughs> to me personally, it feels more intuitive, and I always worry. So, uh, considering and having monsters in mind uh, helps me uh, formulate and put into categories uh, my anxiety and my uh, yeah worries and challenges. So I particularly like it because I have this categorization that I find useful, regardless of the context. Um, if we don't have more uh, ideas, maybe we can uh, we can stop and then actually do one more round of voting to see if we can find a favorite monster. Unless um, mm -hmm. you think that we should give one more minute for the ideation. I still see a few uh, clicks running around. Okay. So just uh, two more seconds. And because I think what's... during the voting sessions, shall we uh, pick a monster or a sticking out? I think you so... would do both. Mm -hmm. Yes, or, you know, it may very well just be one sticking out and we ch just take the monster with it. So I think just one sticking out on the most interesting monster that we want to dive a bit deeper into. So it will be simpler. Okay, then I can stop the timer and uh, let's do some voting. There we go. Oh, we finished? What time? <laughs> that was short. <laughs> I think oh, I, I clicked it one more time. I clicked on the wrong. Uh, it was a second instead of a, an actual minute. You know, time flies. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay. Should work now. Uh, I forgot to say, if anyone has a question, do raise your hand or post them in the chat. We're keeping an eye on that. So we are able to, to answer uh, as we are voting. Thank you. 
Okay, a few more seconds and uh... Oh, wow. Okay, so, so we've got obsession, the accuracy of the work of AI. Okay, I'm taking this one. Because uh, what you'll see now in our last activity, what we'll be doing is we're trying to actually uh, try and counterattack this monster or do something about it. And the strategic responses are exactly that, this ability to take action, and execute on your business model if you have to. Uh, but on a, let's say, on a more granular or simpler scale is you, uh, we break it down into two uh, kind of sets, two classes. Uh, the first one is the reactive class, which uh, involves you uh, a survival response uh, or an adaptive response when you have a monster that it's really in front of you and you have to uh, determine a very quick route into handling it. Uh, the same goes into the adapt. You know, you are being disrupted and more or less you have to uh, begin to develop a strategy to overcome the crisis. Uh, but then on the other hand, we have this uh, class of proactive uh, responses, which refers to expand and transform, uh, which looks uh, at the strategy from an opportunity point of view. It's no longer feeling bound by the monster as a threat, but encountering it just as yet another uh, aspect that needs to be overcome. But what you have is primarily the opportunity that you're trying to get to, whether it's in a different ocean, um, it's uh, referring to partnering up with a, a different set of relationships, and or it's becoming a new player altogether. So you might as well turn from a a uh, protector into a maker, or a, why not into a maverick? But it will be, I guess, many, many steps. So for this uh, uh, specific uh, activity, we're actually going to play a little bit with the monster that we have chosen. So I need to bring in the uh, the Moby Dick, so it still sits with us, with the obsession. But what we want is to think about specifically, now that are, we are in the blue ocean, and we are mavericks, so we need to think about really outside the box. And we're worried about the accuracy of AI, of their data sets, of their decisions. So now we have to begin thinking, how can we bring up these four types of responses? If, you know, we might as well just focus on the defeat, which will be we are, are conquering AI and we're not letting it uh, uh, bring this inaccurate, uh, in, inaccurate responses into the world. But at the same time, we're also uh, acknowledging the fact that sometimes AI can't be stopped. Data is too big for a human eye to supervise. So we can think about uh, ways to escape it or to avoid it altogether. If not, you know, <laughs> the last thing would be we might as well just uh, uh, just die in front of it and accept that we have to live with this imperfection. But just to think a bit, you know, outside the box, our perspectives, what what actions can we actually take now in response to this monster? I'm just going to give another five minutes just uh, to let everyone cook up their ideas. And uh, if you can bring, I brought the monster, but if you can bring the name of the player so we don't forget who is the player. Oh, yes, I will. So I think that the Maverick is one of my favorite characters because it doesn't abide by those. Maybe you can start sharing screen again for those who can't see the board. Yes. Uh, surrender. Let AI just, you know, do the thing and we're just going to, to live with it. Uh, well, that's but a until it action, gain... but that's uh, more or less uh, either it's in between. Think, you know, there's still time. <laughs> We are in this, uh, you know, race for automation, but we still have some level of control and awareness of, you know, there's still a battle 
Uh, so I think it's a, it's interesting to think about the loopholes that we create for ourselves when we interact with AI. I mean, uh, I think I was reading a study about this, um, uh, how they want, they don't, they don't want to let children say thank you to ChatGPT because that would mean you know you're talking to a sentient being and it would deform their uh, perception over the uh, what it what AI is. And you know, in a sense, I was like, but I I do it too. <laughs> I also say thank you and please. It's not something that uh, necessarily changes how I perceive an AI tool. But it's just. But how, how do you think that this is related to the uh, notion of accuracy? And what can we do to uh, actually not fall prey? And because of trust. Always... So, how much trust? You know, I think one way to avoid it, I'll be just not to trust that everything I'm given by AI is as true. As simple as this. I mean, I'm just going to write it down. And can I ask. And, uh, as a maverick, do you have any other <laughs> creative. Uh... Uh, power in your disposal that you can do something out of the ordinary uh, to actually get even a small bit and not fall prey to to this obsession that everything has to be AI. So how can we think of a hybrid worker differently? Natalie wanted to say something. Yes, I wanted to ask a question. Um, can I give an example of how a, an action can differ if, for example, there was a different ocean or a different player? Um, the action depends actually in the context. So now that we have uh, the context of the blue ocean, which is highly innovative, we are talking about... Uh, unmet needs, we're talking about uh, an emergent space where the opportunity is to be created. So this gives us a lot of freedom not to be constrained of what we can do and how we should act. And also in this instance, this is coupled with the maverick, which is the most provocative and uh, very difficult to put in a, a narrow box type of player. So if you are a company like that, you have um, all the freedom and all the um, opportunity to really shake the world and shake it in a very unexpected way. And these are type of the actions that would be associated with the, the blue ocean, in this case, a maverick. If, for example, mm -hmm. you are in the blue ocean, but you are a protector, a protector is somebody who uh, worries about the status quo. The type of actions would be different in the context of you maybe perhaps um, advocating for better policies or more responsive actions and certain uh, standardization of practices and things like that. So your actions would are determined also by the type of the player you are. Uh, another example I could give is if you are uh, maybe a buyer, all you want is the exchange, the, the flow of information on transaction. And mm -hmm. Uh, this could also mean that uh, from your um, actions point of view, you may uh, strike different partnerships and different collaborations and you may prioritize uh, uh, your friends in a different set uh, to overcome that and rally the troops, so to say, uh, in this domain. So actions are very closely related to who you are as an identity and also your context, which is the ocean. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so shall we do one last round of voting? I see people were very adamant on defeating the monster, which I really like. No one wants to really die. <laughs> but can we pick maybe uh, one action that particularly uh, resonates with, with us? So I'm going to... Mm -hmm. And there we go. This is a tough one because I had few favorites. Uh, yeah, but, too. Um, you ask us to go with one, so that's okay. Let's see.
Um, I think, you know, that, now that I'm seeing, I think a, a special maverick response would have been, if you can't beat them, join them. So you're going to join forces with AI and it's going to be like the partner in crime. <laughs> I uh, like this. Um, oh, we have a really close one around a restrict AI where the benefits outweigh the risks, yeah. make AI assess its own output compared to human. That's a really interesting one. Create procedures and regulations. I can take more. I'm not uh, completely. I can try and get a few more. Let's see. Because uh, what we'll do now is we're going to move here to the uh, summary. So just one second. Forgive my uh, aggressive call. Oh, I can't bring actually to the presenting. So I wanted to uh, kind of provide a summary of how the tool can help you keep track. Uh, on the things that you've discussed, because you know it's it's very easy to to get lost a lot of good ideas. But the visual components uh, can help you fulfill two things. One is to yes keep track of the elements that you've discussed and in in which direction you went, and also it helps you think a bit non-linearly because now you have this representation that uh, you can jump from one ocean to a player from one player to a strategic response and see the kind of monsters you're surrounded by. So what we did uh, at this point, we just explored a very tiny bit of the framework. We focused on one thing at a time because uh, we wanted you to get familiar to uh, with the framework. But the whole exercise, it's powerful when you're exploring every facet and uh, the when the, the, the tool is out for, for self-use, uh, you will have to make final decisions about the kind of answers, uh, uh, about the kind of strategic responses uh, you want to uh, further pursue. And um, How do you just like? to... <laughs> sorry, you you want to say more on this one? No, no, I think you can move on. I just say yeah. uh, I was just thinking like how how do people. Uh, think about this like do they actually like this type of tracking because it's a it's a visual tracking it's not just the storytelling tracking um before we uh, get some real feedback on the, what uh, people like or not i just wanted to give a few key takeaways um to sum up the discussion today and uh, say that uh, ai can help us think work and collaborate better but we have to upskill the way we co-create in this hybrid environment. And to do that, we actually um, see that um, it is necessary to use multidimensional and multidisciplinary approaches that allows us to zoom in and out dynamically. And with that, we invite you to check out next week when the multi-ocean strategy framework is released on Miroverse. Um, check it for yourself and uh, hopefully experiment with this further to dive deeper into the space, opportunity spaces, and uh, create more powerful strategic responses. And with that, we actually reached the end of our session. Uh, we were hoping for some feedback, if you have a few minutes to spare, uh, to tell us what you like, what you wish, and um, if you wonder uh, if the framework... Um, created some new questions uh, <clears throat> that pop up in your mind. And as you do that, uh, we also opening up for Q&A for those that are curious and have burning questions. We also provided on the board uh, links to our LinkedIn profiles for those that, that want to get in touch and take the discussion further. Please um, do reach out. We are happy to, to talk to you. And if anyone has a question, Let's uh, let's discuss. And can I can I take one minute before we dive into the questions? Uh, I shared in Zoom chat uh, the link to just two questions uh, type form survey. Uh, please uh, take a moment to uh, get inside and um, assess this workshop because uh, 
from the Miro side, it will really help us uh, improve and support our webinar organizers uh, with uh, your feedback and to improve the quality of any further webinars and workshops for Miro community. That's it. Uh, let's go to questions. See your hand raised. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, in these frameworks, when there are uh, some capability for zoom in and zoom out, coming to some conclusion, it's very difficult, uh, even with some limited time, like uh, one hour time. Uh, what would you suggest in order to come a conclusion after this uh, workshop in organization in order to find out where to go? What's the next steps here? Um, I I'll take this question. So, take it oh, okay. oh yeah. you won. Okay, go on. <laughs> Please, Diana, go ahead. Okay. So uh, what we presented here in the workshop, it's a way to get familiar with the tool when you know there's a very diverse group of people interacting with it, with many uh, unknowns on our side. But what we uh, are working on right now to release is this uh, tool that allows you to converge on uh, a set of actions. And the way we are kind of making it, we're separating this tool mapping with uh, and also this these strategic scenarios. So we are not necessarily being prescriptive, but we are creating a flow for you to follow through. And at the end of each scenario, you need to be able to connect your initial problem statement with the final decision that you make. So uh, with each scenario, you need to, to be able to converge. And of course, you know, it's, it's very difficult, like you're saying, you know, it's, it's impossible sometimes to uh, bring all of that into one, uh, one coherent sentence. But I think it's what the, the tool allows you to do is to tell a story in multiple ways and also remember it because you have this metaphor that supports it. So you can actually have more than one idea at the end that you can share. And this tracker that uh, kind of you, you've seen on the mirror board, this summary, can maybe be very helpful to, to capture those ideas from you know, how you envision the metaphor, but also uh, how you respond to the crisis or to the opportunity the other scenarios that we didn't dive into today. Thank you. Another hand raised, Jean? Yeah, when uh, a number of the various things that we choose to evaluate exist in multiple dimensions simultaneously, and looking at some of them more in line with the the slide that says multi-ocean strategy framework that looks more like a radar diagram all right, so that you could display some of these things using a radar diagram to show that it's actually in multiple dimensions at the same time. It was just a thought. Okay, that's an interesting thing. Yeah. It's uh, a very, very accurate observation because indeed we we had in mind this multi-dimensionality and also complexity so that we have a holistic understanding of what is in play. You may have noticed that we are combining in this framework and fusing actually different components. There is a strong strategy component, but there is also quite a pronounced brand identity component through the player. And lastly, is the innovation around the monsters. So it's a, it's a really interesting combination. I see another question from Ar Arnav. In the last minute, um, I, I just want to say that um, I mean, I quite like the idea that we're going through different outlooks and different uh, approaches to reach different answers. But I think, in terms of how the workshop was done, I would have liked to explore. I mean, since you all of us have different strengths and different uh, capabilities, we, I mean, everyone could have gone through a different track altogether. In this one hour, we could have had one person going through, leading us through one track, other person leading us in the track. Because I actually want to explore other tracks as well. And at the end, it would be fun to see how everything could come in together. And it'd be even uh, interesting to see how uh, other tracks are different than my track. You know, it'd be interesting to see how that uh, approach 
but I quite enjoyed it. And thank you for this experience. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Anav. <laughs> so what Krasi and Kevin don't know that Anav is actually a veteran. So he's been watching our development. I think he's one of the most proficient who's participating. So I see and take up the challenge, yes. And uh, we can uh, we can always do another another webinar, another workshop, and take this into consideration. It's a good idea. Thank you. Yeah, uh, if you have a challenge that you want to test the the framework with, more than happy to to try it out. Thanks. So we are right okay. on the hour, Natalie. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Chrissy, Diana, Kevin. Uh, that was very interesting and I would say engaging with all of those uh, images, uh, oceans, players, and um, monsters. Uh, very interesting approach to uh, tackle almost any strategy. I mean, we can pick up anything, uh, not only AI. So I hope that uh, it was useful for you. And yeah, stay tuned for updates. Uh, this will be templatized and added to Miraverse so that you can reuse it later together with your team. And please, please don't forget to go uh, over a link in Zoom and fill out the um, survey. So that's it. Thank you very much. We'll follow you up uh, with an email containing the links to the recording, uh, our survey, and the board. Thank you very much. Okay. Have a Thank good rest of the day. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Take care. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.